All right, today on Our House, I'm here with my daughter, Riley. She's going to help me with this project. We thought we'd do some Halloween... It's September. ...stuff. Yeah, it's September. we got to get it out early so you can have decorations out. <laughs> So for our jars to make them just a little bit different, we don't want to just do jack-o'-lanterns. Everybody does jack-o'-lanterns or ghosts. Oh. So one we're going to make into a mummy, and the other is going to be made into Frankenstein. Now for the mummy, what we're going to do, we found some eyes on the laptop, some different spooky eyes, and we'll probably have to find some more. But we'll cut out. We're going to use our drawing paper. And... We're going to hold it up, trace these out. You could just print them out on your printer, but our printer is out of ink. Anyway, we're going to trace these, then cut those eyes out, and then we're going to reverse it. Where it's black, we're going to make it white, and where it's white, we're going to make it black. To make the paper black, we're just going to use a fat Sharpie marker. Why would you reverse it? We're going to reverse it because we want this part of the eye to show up white with the light because we're going to be putting tea lights inside of these and that'll make the eyes glow what are and then tea lights? tea lights are small little candles and then the rest of it will be black around it so it'll black out the light and not let the light pass through then we're going to be wrapping the outside of the jar with strips of old t-shirt we're just going to use a pair of scissors and an old t-shirt to cut some rag strips and then we'll wrap it around and we're going to decoupage those on with glue and then the mummy should be pretty much done all right, so we have our eyes cut out. Now the cutout I made go around larger because I need to turn this white to black with my Sharpie marker. And then I need the inside cut out so that the light can come through unobstructed. So since I'm coloring this black with a Sharpie, that means that light won't pass through it. Make sure it's dark enough, though, or else it will pass through. Right. But seeing as how the light will come through a white t-shirt, that means that the outside shape around the edges of this are important. They need to be a shape that's going to kind of show a little bit of a shadow of a face, right? Because if you just cut it out into a block shape, then a block is going to kind of show through the shadow of this paper will show through on your t-shirt area outside and it won't look very good unless you make the entire piece of paper cover the whole thing but we want the light from the inside from the tea light to illuminate through the t-shirt material and light it up we don't want to just see the glowing eyes because then the only way you would see the only way you would see the glowing eyes is if you turn the lights out and if you turn the lights out it's going to be kind of hard to see the white t-shirt material, right? Well, I don't get it. <laughs> It'll all come together when we're done. You'll see. We cut some strips off of our t-shirts. And now Riley's going to kind of start wrapping the top to show you how we're going to be applying them. So getting started is kind of going to be the tougher part. And you don't want these to be really neat you know you want them to be kind of messy wraps now we're going to be gluing the eyes on this first but just to kind of show you how this is going to look when you start wrapping them and we're going to have to glue these on anyway so that'll kind of show you how it'll look all right something like that right <laughs> rock on all right and then we're going to put this down here just somewhere in that vicinity you got it on the i know it's okay i'm gonna wipe it off it's okay, I'm going to use this old t-shirt. <clears throat> now, right now it looks kind of like the Lone Ranger. So, or like a bandit. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to put this on here and kind of mop Squishing up a little bit of that excess. And then I want to get it out of the eyes. I don't care about it being around the outside. That's fine, but I don't want it in the eyes. A little bit is okay. So is decoupage whenever you just like put the mosh plush on it and stick it on? It's basically on the floor. <laughs> then we're going to put the mosh podge just kind of around the top of the lid and it doesn't have to be completely covering it. You just want enough to kind of tack this thing on. Because it dries clear. So. <laughs> yeah, well, and you want these to look like rags. So you want them to kind of twist and turn and, you know, putting a twist in it here and there like that. 
That's totally fine. You probably kind of want to show a little bit of the mason jar, though. Yeah, you want this to... No, I don't. I think I want to completely cover the jar. Okay. But you kind of want this to look a little haphazard. You don't want it to look all... Now it really looks like a bandit. You don't want it to look all <laughs> clean and stuff. It looks you know, like a you, bandit because it looks like it has... You want it to look like kind of messy. Thing. I suggest you using toilet paper because that's obviously what mummies are made of. Mummies are made out of toilet paper? Yes. I've heard that somewhere before. <laughs> Everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> now it looks like a prisoner bandit. Or like someone in the hospital. <laughs> so I'm just kind of going over this. <laughs> get some on the black so that it'll come around that. And again, you want this to be messy. You don't want this to be all perfect. So don't make it perfect. And spinning the jar really works. Just kind of hold the the wrap. And remember not to cover his eyes. Are you shooting the rest of the kitchen? No. <laughs> There's the mummy all finished up. Uh, I'll show you later when we test it out and put a tea light in it. Now, let's get on to Frankenstein. So, to do Frankenstein, we've got our jar. We've got our tracing paper. This is really thin paper when you put the Mod Podge on it. We're going to really be able to manipulate this and wrinkle it up and all that stuff around the jar. But it's bigger than what we need. So, first thing I'm going to do is kind of cut the height. Let's see if I can trim this. Yeah. All right, so I'll mark a spot. I'm going to kind of trim this out. And it doesn't have to be perfect because this is going to get spray painted. What are you doing? <laughs> So then it's going to kind of go around the jar like that. Yeah, that's right. We'll have to wrinkle all that in. I'm actually going to cut some relief slits in this. So we've got a Mod Podge. This jar, I'm going to kind of do it in steps rather than trying to get the entire jar done all at once. I'm going to try and do the four sides. Since this is kind of one of those four-sided jars, if you try and do the whole thing all at once, what's gonna happen, Riley? <laughs> it's gonna dry, the glue's gonna dry too fast. Oh my God, then what do you do? <laughs> what happens if the glue dries? Then you fail and have to do it again. And then, yeah, your glue's all dry. All right. Too bad for you. Too bad for you and your glue, man. <laughs> All right, and then we're going to start sticking this on. Now, do you remember how to do Mod Podge, Riley? You remember what the the trick to doing Mod Podge is? Ten coats. <laughs> ten coats. Yeah, well, ten coats. Could be close. No, you coat. put it underneath and then... Put it on top. And then you put it on top. That's right. So now that that side is stuck and it's going to kind of hold, we're going to go in here and start coating on the other side. Remember, one side at a time. The jar is dry and ready to paint. We use the same technique to make some eyes to go in the middle of this jar. Mm -hmm. And then we're actually going to go through and paint maybe a stitch on the top of his head and we'll glue some bolts on the side. Okay? I'm starting off Frankenstein's face now. I've got two bolts. I don't know if you can see these or not. These are rivets off of jeans. Torn off of old jeans. Glued those on the side to make the bolts on his neck. And then the cutout eyes that we made from tracing those off the computer. Just colored those in with black Sharpie and I've glued them on. I glued them a little low down on the face because I want him to have a big forehead. I'm going to go across and make the scar that goes across his forehead. I'm either going to try that with a Sharpie or I'm going to use my black paint marker. Uh, I don't know which yet. I'm not so sure this Sharpie is going to do it. I'll try it. but. If it doesn't work out, then I'll go to my black paint marker. And then I'm probably going to draw a mouth down in here. <clears throat> and then hopefully, when I put a tea light in this, some of these wrinkled skin-like areas will kind of glow and light up and then leave the shadow of his eyes. The light shouldn't pass through that. We'll see how it turns out. I'm not sure. Uh -huh. 